way The job's a joke, you broke Your love lives the old way It's like you're always stuck in second gear But when it hasn't been your day Good morning, morning, Faith Faith Lutheran. Lutheran. I'm Summer. And I'm Alexander. Thank you for joining us. Our reporters have been working hard to bring you all the latest news around town. We have back-to-back stories from the Golden Knights to Starbucks to the Apple Store. First, here's Drew with the Vegas Golden Knights. Hi, I'm Sammy from FLTV. The Golden Knights created history last year, making it to the Stanley Cup on their first year. Let's go around interviewing students on their thoughts on the Golden Knights and if they'll make it this year. Who is your favorite Golden Knights player? William Carlson, because he has the same last name as my mom. How did you feel when they lost the Stanley Cup, and do you think they'll make it this year? I was sad. It was, I mean, it was a bummer that they lost, but they played so well all season. I know they're going to do it again this season, and we'll win. We'll definitely win. What was your reaction when you found out Vegas was going to have their first professional team? I was pretty excited. I'm a huge Bronco fan, so I was bummed when the Raiders were coming, but I'm really excited whenever the Knights are coming. I wanted a whole new expansion team. The Golden Knights made it to the Stanley Cup final, but lost to the Washington Capitals. Last year, they set a record of winning the most games in a row and are expecting to do even more this, even better this year. Your favorite Golden Knights player? Um, I like Nate Schmidt, even though he's on suspension still. and. He's just my, he's my favorite player. How did you feel when they lost the Stanley Cup final and do you think they'll make it this year? I was sad and I think if we could have done that good last year then we'll only improve so I think we can definitely make it this year. What was your reaction when we found out Vegas was going to have their first professional team? I was really excited because this was like the first really big professional team in Las Vegas. Go Knights go, go Knights go, go Knights go. What is your favorite Golden Knights player? Uh, William Carlson and Nate Schmidt. How did you feel when they lost the Stanley Cup and do you think they'll make it this year? Uh, I feel sad because it was their first year and they made it so far. And I do think they'll make it back again this year because they have a really good team. What was your reaction when you found out Vegas was going to have their first professional team? Uh, well. I, I still lived in Canada, so I was pretty happy still because Vegas is pretty cool. I hope you skate into hockey season with a great attitude this year, this Faith. year, Faith Lutheran. Drew, who's your favorite player? Ryan Reeves. Mine's Nate Schmidt. Back to you. Hi, I'm Marley from FLTV, and today we're going to be talking about some pumpkin flavored foods coming in this beautiful fall season. I'm going to be going around and interviewing students about some new and favorite pumpkin flavored foods and if they're interested in buying some this season. Hi, do you ever enjoy pumpkin flavored things during the fall? Why or why not? Yes, I enjoy pumpkin flavored things and because it's good to me. I like pumpkin flavored things. Have you ever tried anything pumpkin flavored and did you like it? Yes, pumpkin pie. Yes, I liked it. And how do you feel about some of these pumpkin flavored things like yogurt, chips, and more? I only like pumpkin pie. I hate every other pumpkin thing. Okay, thank you. Pumpkin spice is really hitting the stores lately this fall season. Okay. Do you like pumpkin spice and why or why not? Um, no, because I just think it's gross. What pumpkin flavor things have you tried and why didn't you like it? Um, pumpkin pie and it's just like not my favorite thing. How do you feel about pumpkin flavored things such as yogurts and chips? I don't like them. <laughs> Thank you. Do you like pumpkin spice? Why or why not? Yes, because it tastes like pumpkins. <laughs> what pumpkin flavored things have you tried and did you like it? Um, I tried pie and I liked it. 
How, how do you feel about pumpkin flavored things such as yogurt and chips? It sounds kind of gross, but I mean, if people eat it, I guess it's okay. Thank you. These items are usually only available during the fall season. They are sold at multiple stores and are liked by many people. Thank you to the staff and the students who gave their opinions on this topic of pumpkin spice. Thanks for watching. Back to you. Hi, I'm Devin. I'm David. And we're from FLTV. Today we're going to be interviewing people about iPhone X Max. What is your opinion about the iPhone X Max? Uh, I think it's too big. Uh, do you think that this phone is useful and why? No, it's still too big. Would you want to buy this phone? Why or why not? Uh, it's really expensive. I already have a decent phone, and yeah, it's too big. What is your opinion on the iPhone X Max? It's, uh, it's stupid and it's pointless. Do you think this phone is useful, and why? Um, no, because it's stupid, and uh, it's just a bigger version of the iPhone X, and it's unnecessary. Would you want to buy this phone? Why or why not? No, because again, it's pointless, and it's $300 more, so like, why? Apple has created a new phone which is very similar to the iPhone X. The iPhone X Max is much larger and heavier than the iPhone X, and it comes in gold. The iPhone X Max also has a 512GB storage capacity, and there is an increase in battery life. The iPhone X Max costs about $500 more than the iPhone X, which puts it at a price of $1,500. I'm Devin. I'm David. And we're from FLTV. Back to you. Thank you to all those reporters. Up next, Campus News. From Hydroflask disappearing to clubs you can join. Here's Ian kicking off Campus News. Here at Faith, there are many clubs to choose from. Today we are going to be looking at some of the options. Let's go. Um, we realized a long time ago that if a student is really passionate about something, that their leadership skills come out. Um, a, an adult could teach you about something and have a passion about it, but a student comes up with a ton of different ideas and a ton of different ways to lead um, an opportunity for students. Um, so, having said that, you also have to think about the fact that one of our main goals as a school is to produce leaders and why not give them the opportunity to lead something. Um, there are some groups that are considered clubs, but I look at it more on a broader scale and call it a student opportunity. So a club, an honor society, a class, a co-curricular class, an extracurricular class, we think of all of them in the stance of a student opportunity. There are many different clubs here at Faith. Some include the Cupcake Club, the Greenhouse Club, and the Ukulele Club. There are forums all over Faith. I suggest that you, if you are interested in any of the clubs, you can go to the meetings and find out what they're all about. Uh, the Cupcake Club. I love decorating cupcakes and I love making cupcakes in general. Okay. As you can see, there are many clubs to join in middle school. Which one will you join? Back to you. Hi, I'm Alexander Ray. And I'm Kayla Belkins. And we're from FLTV. Today we are going to be interviewing students and faculty to see if they prefer Mo Moodle or Crusader Connect. Let's go see. Also, it's just, it gives parents a one-stop place, and students, a one-stop place to see grades and or where all their homework is listed. Uh, so it makes that part easier for parents and students. It also makes it a lot easier for teachers because they're not managing two separate systems, Moodle and Crusader Connect. They can do everything inside of Crusader Connect and uh, it streamlines the process for them as well. Now, as you can see, Crusader Connect can be accessed on many devices like the iPad, iPhone, and iMac, along with any other device not starting with an I, like Apple Watches or anything like that. All you need to do is look up Crusader Connect on a search engine of your choice. Yes, I think it's better because, in my opinion, it's easier to, well, to, to do with and it's just easier to see your assignments and I think it's just better overall. I like it. It's good. Simplicity. I'm Kayla Belkins. And I'm Alexander Ray. Back to you. Do you have a hydro flask? Yes. Yes. No. Have you ever had it stolen? Yeah. Uh-huh. Have you ever had any of your other water bottles stolen? Yes, four times. How did you react and how can you make sure this never happens again? 
Um, well, I was sad because I know that they're like expensive and stuff, and um, I really liked it. But um, now I know to put my name on the water bottle and like make sure it's always in my bag. Um, I was really sad because it was my favorite water bottle, um, and to make sure this never happens again, uh, I got a new one. I put stickers all over it so no one steals it. Keep it with me and not leave it places. Hydro flasks are known to be high quality water bottles that usually range from $30 to $60. When students get them stolen, they are extremely disappointed since they are great water bottles that many people love. Students can leave these in classrooms and in the cafeteria during lunch. They can leave them during PE or before and after school. Then other students will see these water bottles and take them. Do you have a hydro flask? I do have a hydro flask. Have you ever gotten it stolen? No. Have you ever heard of other students getting their hydro flask stolen, and how could you prevent this? You know, I really haven't, but I will tell you, every day I see about 300 hydro flasks sitting in the lost and found, and so I would question, do we have a rampant hydro fee, or are we leaving our hydros everywhere and forgetting where they were? So I think a really good preventative method would be to not leave it places. Thank you for all those stories. Now let's celebrate the upcoming holiday with Kylie. Hi, I'm Kylie O from FLTV, and today we're going to be going around interviewing middle school teachers and students about their favorite holiday and holiday treats. Let's get to it. What is your favorite upcoming holiday and why? Christmas, because I love the Christmas spirit. Thanksgiving, because um, I like all the food. What is your favorite holiday treat and why? <laughs> the Christmas stamp cookies because they just bring the Christmas spirit alive. Pumpkin pie because I really like pumpkins flavoring. If you were to make your own holiday treat, what would it be and why? It would be a cookie with Fruit Loops on it because I really like Fruit Loops. Um, probably like a chocolate turkey, like, <laughs> like the shape of a turkey, but out of chocolate. During the holidays, many people enjoy getting into the spirit by downloading seasonal music and following fun holiday themed accounts with pictures and videos of festivities. What is your favorite upcoming holiday and why? I love Christmas and it's uh, what the family gets together, we eat a lot, we go to church, and just being with people I love. What is your favorite holiday treat and why? Um, well, I'm Italian, so as far as desserts go, I love pizzas. What is that? Uh, they're, they're Italian cookies that you use, um, like a little press, a cookie press, and. Uh, it has aniseed in it and they're delicious and you put some powdered sugar on top of them and they're really good so I'll bring you some. If you were to make your own holiday treat, what would it be and why? Well, I'm not a big dessert person except for the pizzas, so treat, it's always pasta or like a prime rib or chicken, just r real food, savory. Wow, that was so interesting. I hope you enjoyed our story today and have a great rest of your holly day. Hi, I'm Riley Solis, reporting live from FLTV. Today we're going to be going around interviewing students about their opinion on the National Youth Gathering and whether they're going. Let's get to it. Hi, what's your favorite part about the National Youth Gathering? I think one of my favorite parts about the National Youth Gathering is just being um, uh, in fellowship with, with um, all sorts of believers and with other Christians and being able to um, talk about our faith and learn more about our faith and just being able to worship uh, together. What's your favorite part about it? Um, I, again, I think it's just, it's just a ton of fun. I mean, it's just anytime you have a, a fun activity, uh, you know, there's just all sorts of things for all types of people to do. And so uh, I love being and meeting new people. I love just playing the different games in the convention center. I love being at the mass gatherings and being able to, to uh, learn more about my savior and in a, in a fun and exciting atmosphere. It's just a, it's a great time. And finally, what are you looking forward to learn? Um, I think, you know, it's it's hard to uh, it's hard to say. I mean, because you uh, you don't 
you don't really know what you don't know. So you learn something new every time uh, you're in God's Word, and you can always uh, you can look and appreciate and learn more about your uh, faith and about your Savior. And so uh, anytime you have any of these opportunities, that's just a great, uh, great experience. Anything else to add? Um, I think that... Um, that this is a, just an awesome opportunity for all of our students at Faith. I think if um, you know students uh, that wouldn't normally have the opportunity to go take advantage of it, that they would they would have a great time and would be able to grow in their faith and uh, and just uh, really enjoy the experience. Thank you. Faith Lutheran Middle School and High School is offering an opportunity for 8th through 12th graders to go on a trip to Minneapolis, Minnesota to learn more about their faith in God and who their Savior is. Are you planning on going to the National Youth Gathering and why? Uh, I'm planning on going to expand my faith and just to meet other people and Christians so I can just, you know, have fun time there with learning about Jesus. What do you plan on learning from this event? Uh, I plan on growing my faith and just knowing like little other things in the Bible that I won't usually get in like a regular church service or school. Thank you. It is from July 10th through 15th, 2019. It is an awesome opportunity to get, get together with friends and become stronger in your faith with God and Jesus Christ. I would definitely think about going. Are you planning on that going to the National Youth Gathering and why? Um, yes, because I believe it will be fun, and this is my last year before I go into high school. What are you planning on learning from this event? I hope to learn a lot more about Jesus and how he's our Savior and why he did this for us. Thank you. Anything else? No. <laughs> Thanks to all the faculty and students that gave their opinions about the National Youth Gathering. Back to you. FLTV. Have you heard about the new Alex program? Well, I'm going to go around interviewing students and teachers what they think about this new program. Alex is the new online math homework program. Most middle school math classes use this, except for regular sixth grade math and honors geometry. You have to solve three problems correctly in order to pass the objective. However, if you miss it, you'll have to do another math problem. What are your opinions about Alex? Um, Alex is kind of nice sometimes because you have less problems to do, but it's also really frustrating when you get some wrong because you can end up having homework that will take you an hour instead of like 30 minutes or something. Which is better, paper or Alex? Why? Um, personally, I think the paper is better because I actually kind of enjoyed using the textbook and getting the problems from the textbook. And also, there's not a possibility that you're going to have to do more problems if you miss a problem. And lastly, do you think this is helpful? Why or why not? Um, I do think it is, and I don't. I do in that um, it can cause homework to go faster, and it's probably more efficient. But sometimes the Wi-Fi is not working, or you have to do more problems, and it can just take a much longer time to do your homework. I'm in geometry, so I don't really have any like actual interactions with it. So all I know is that it's not that interesting, kind of weird for online math and stuff. Which do you think is better, Alex or paper? Why? Uh, I like paper better because on paper you get to see all your work right in front of you and less virtual and more right in front of you, like I said. And do you think this is helpful for other students? Why or why not? Well, uh, in my friend group, I know a lot of people dislike it and thinks it's not that helpful. And personally, I would feel the same if I had to do it. What exactly is Alex? Alex is a online homework program so that we can fit, fit work, on, work on the math concepts and different topics. Why did you choose to use Alex instead of the regular paper homework? Alex has a way for kids to make sure that they are um, understanding and learning the topics and repeating the homework that they need. And there's a, it's a way for the students to be able to work specifically on what they need individually, not in general what everybody needs. Do you prefer students to do Alex or paper homework? I prefer my students to do their Alex on paper, but I like how Alex tells them if they're right or wrong right away. And lastly, do you think that Alex is more helpful to students? Yes, I do. Thank you.
You've heard it from the students and teachers. Have a great day, Faith Lutheran. Don't forget to do your homework. Back to you. Thank you for watching Faith Lutheran. I'm Alexander. And I'm Summer. God, God bless. bless. Yeah.